Yo, what is up guys? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So 343 is about to drop a major update for Halo Infinite next week on March 19th. Those features being the new network overhaul, an easy anti-cheat system, a squad battle refresh, so they're making changes to the sandbox, and of course we also got the quality of life updates and just your typical bug fixes and whatnot. So with that being said, let's break it all down. Starting off with the new network overhaul, which was something that they tested with the new firefight playlist whenever that released and then they slowly rolled it out to the squad battle playlist to test it in a pvp environment and most of the feedback was pretty positive there were still some issues with the new network but it seems like most people did find it a lot better and so once 343 finished testing out the new network they went ahead and started making some changes to it as they wanted to improve it even further and so they went ahead and did that and it seems like now they're ready to release it once again except of course even better or at least we're gonna find out once it dropped i mean they even say down here that they are confident that this updated model will result in better and more consistent multiplayer experience anyways moving on to the next thing it seems like they're adding some sort of anti-cheat system which is the same one they used for halo mcc which is easy anti-cheat now i'm gonna be honest i haven't encountered cheaters since i think december of launch of halo infinite so i don't know how people have been finding cheaters i guess it's still an issue i haven't really experienced any cheaters or anything like that maybe i don't even notice it it could be like seen through walls and stuff like that but um that's going to be good for the game because i know that was a huge problem back when this game launched so we'll see how that goes i'm sure it's going to help out with that so the next thing they're adding in this update is the squad battle refresh which is going to add seven new squad battle maps to the squad battle playlist now i don't know if they're going to add it in addition to the squad battle maps that we already have i think they might remove all the old squad battle maps and add these new ones in just like they did with the cyber showdown 3 operation with the husky raid playlist which by the way i think is a great idea because then we get to experience all the new stuff and then maybe like a week later they could add in the old maps once again anyways the new maps that are going to be added is the first one being perdition which is a remake of a halo 4 map and the next one being refuge which is one we've already played that is actually in the big team battle playlist so i'm not sure how that's going to work but i guess they're throwing that map into this playlist as well kind of thought that was meant for btb but i don't know we'll see how it plays with squad battle and the next one being timberland evolved which is a recreation of a halo ce map the next one being rendezvous which this one's really interesting i talked about this one in my previous video revealing some of the new maps that are coming in the future and yeah this was one of them and this one's like a section of i guess you could say the odst campaign or the firefight map recreated as like a multiplayer map in infinite is basically what it is but i found this one really interesting because i don't know it seemed rather small but who knows we'll see how that plays out but anyways let's move on to the next map which is gyre or gyre i probably pronounced that wrong but it's supposed to be a recreation or remake of Halo Reach's Tempest map which I'm not gonna lie I actually was not a fan of but I don't know we'll see how it plays on Infinite and the next one being Harvest, which is another Halo 4 remake. And this is a really good BTB map that I enjoyed on Halo 4, especially for CTF. I think it works really well, so I am looking forward to testing that one out. And the final map being Behemoth, which a lot of people have said, you know, it's a bit too big for 4v4. So it seems like now we're going to test it out for 8v8, which is going to be fun to see how that works. I'm sure it's going to play really well with 8v8. But that is about all the maps that are going to be added for the squad battle. Most of them are remakes. I don't think really any of them are original which is quite interesting i'm not sure i mean i guess i mean who doesn't like the old halo maps but i would have liked to see at least like one original forge map in there i guess rendezvous is kind of considered that but that's pretty much all i gotta say about that so moving on to the next part of this update we got some weapon tuning updates the first weapon being the bandit rifle and the bandit evo are now getting an increased reload speed i've seen people say that the reload speed for the bandit rifle is too slow so another weapon they're also adjusting is the heat wave and they're pretty much just, they pretty much just say that it's going to require more precision when you're going for the long range shots and all the close range shots are going to stay the same but they pretty much just say that there's going to be it's going to be a bit more difficult just to hit those shots long range with the heat wave so you're going to have to be a bit more precise with it on to the next weapon they're also tuning is the plasma pistol and here they pretty much just say flat out they're going to make it have a faster charge up time 
which I do like this because I feel like the plasma pistol was very slow for charging up the shots. To be honest, I never even pick up the plasma pistol just because it's really bad. But with the faster charge up time, I think there's now more of a purpose for it now. However, they did slightly decrease the rate of fire for the single shots and it also has a faster overheat. So we'll see how that plays out. I like some of these changes. I mean, I never use a plasma pistol, so maybe I'll test it out a bit, see if it's actually viable now, if I even want to use it. Ever since they got rid of the EMP shot, it kind of just like brought this weapon down pretty low. Anyways, let's move on to the next weapon, which is the Stalker Rifle. Now, this weapon is quite deadly, especially if you know how to shoot. And so they're pretty much nerfing it is what they're doing here. So they're decreasing the number of shots to overheat. And the number of shots to overheat went down from 7 to 6. So now you can only shoot 6 shots instead of 7 before it overheats. And it also has slower venting rate per second. So yeah, overall just pretty much nerfing it a bit. Because it could be pretty deadly in the right hands. So on to the next weapon that got some changes is the Commando Rifle. And to really sum it up, they basically just say that it's a faster bloom reset. So there's not as much bloom. And I think at close range, it also feels more consistent. Like you can actually control the rifle better, I think is what they're saying here. Because here in their notes, they do mention that people reported it feeling slippery. And they also want it to have a more consistent damage output against the battle rifle and the bandit evo. So it got a bit of a buff. I think the last time the commando got a change, it was actually slightly nerfed, but it seems like they're buffing it up a bit again. If I remember correctly anyways, it's been a while since they've made changes to the weapons. And the biggest weapon of them all, which people have been complaining about the most, which I personally, I mean, I was fine with it. It's none other than the gravity hammer, which has made quite some clips as this thing is an absolute powerhouse and just destroys pretty much everything especially in husky raid and so yeah they made some adjustments to it the first one is they fixed an issue that was doubling the power of the of the gravity hammer and its variants so it seems like there was a, some sort of bug that just made this thing a monster and it was doing two times the power and so now it's not going to be doing that and they also say that they increased its original tuning by 1 1.5 to allow for better damage and knockback and so they do say here that the 1.5 is its pre-season 5 strength and that this places the values at a halfway point between what it was pre-season 5 and what it has been in recent months so we'll see how that plays out see if it's still devastating it still sounds like it's still going to be good just slightly nerfed is what i'm getting from this so so on to the next thing we got the firefight custom which is going to be arriving with this update and this is supposed to be more of a blank firefight mode so it allows more flexibility with this mode for forgers and it pretty much just removes the king of the hill aspect but it keeps everything else and yeah that's pretty much what it is it's just adds more options and customization that you can do with, with firefight and that about wraps up this update there is of course going to be quality of life improvements you know bug fixes and whatnot I think a network overhaul is definitely the biggest thing here and what I was looking mostly forward to at this point because that's been such a major issue that this game has had and I hope the I really do hope it works out because <laughs> yeah it can be frustrating playing Halo Infinite sometimes. Anyways let me know what you guys think about this update and with that being said consider subscribing and liking the video as it shows your support and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.